Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurafil, Aurafil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clockworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Havel Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havel's. P&B, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space. Quilty. There's no guesswork when you're making patchwork. Today on Quilty, a pattern leads the way. We're going to talk about reading a pattern because it's a very, very important skill to have if you're going to make a quilt. You know, you're going to need a pattern before you're able to read it. So you'll find a pattern uh, for a quilt in lots of different places. Uh, the pattern is your roadmap to the quilt that you're going to make. You can find quilt patterns in all kinds of places. You can find them in books books like this. This is a, a book from, I think, 1999 that uh, Marianne Fons and Liz Porter did. Really great, easy rotary cutting quilts. Uh, you can find patterns for quilts in magazines, like this one-off publication featuring Marianne Fons and Mary Fons. I have no idea who she is. Uh, she's adorable, though. I'll have to check it out. And uh, you can find single one-off one-off patterns that just come on their own uh, at quilt shops. A lot of patterns are sold like this. You get patterns off the internet. Some of them are free. Some of them you pay for. I think the most fundamental thing I can tell you about reading a pattern is that you should read it like a recipe, right? Nobody ever does it. Well, few people read through the whole recipe before they begin cooking, but it's a good idea because a lot of times you find yourself like neck deep in like flour and eggs and you realize that you needed you know, what, saffron or I don't know, something, and you don't have it, and uh, then you're in big trouble. So it's the same with a quilt pattern. Let's say that you were flipping through this little book and you found this wall hanging and you fell in love with it and you wanted to make this wall hanging or you just wanted to make that little house block, okay? It's what we call a representational block. We've talked about that on Quilty. This is a house, a representational house block. So you find in the book, sometimes the images of the finished product are separate from the instructions, but the instructions for that block will be in this book. And you see them right here. So your pattern tells you a few things. First you read through it all, make sure there's no surprises, and then you take a look more closely at what the pattern gives you, okay? The pattern is always going to give you the finished size of the block. That means after all your seam allowances are accounted for, after they've all been sucked in, from the sewing that you, you're doing on it, it's gonna tell you that the block finishes at a certain dimension, and this block finishes eight inches by 12 inches finished, okay? So your pattern's always gonna tell you that. Okay, so another thing that your pattern is gonna tell you is your fabric requirements. It's always gonna tell you what you need to cut and how much fabric you need, but you'll always find out. It'll tell you you need three yards of yellow, four yards for your back, and all of that, it'll tell you. Your uh, pattern will also usually give you tips for piecing, like the order that you want to put your pieces together. Like here, uh, it will show you, you know, join this to this and this to that, and it'll kind of take you through. Sometimes you'll have pictures like this. Sometimes it'll just tell you a lot. Most of the time you'll have diagrams drawn, uh, usually computer-aided images that show you what to join to what. And it's really clear and easy to follow. Even if it takes you time, it's all there. Uh, another thing that it will tell you is uh, the layout of the quilt. Um, once you have all your pieces joined together, it'll show you how to lay it out to finish it. And, and what's funny, this, one of the reasons I picked this pattern to show is that my mom, Marianne Fons and Liz Porter put this together and my mom has always told me in like doing this show, she's like, always show the right way to do something. Don't show people the wrong way. Because that gets really confusing, right? Like that would be confusing to be like, I'm going to do this and this is wrong. Don't do this. It just kind of gets muddy. But that's exactly what they did here. And it's another reason why you need to read the whole pattern because they sewed the chimney wrong in this picture to show you not to do that. But if you don't read the whole pattern and see that they say, don't do an oops block, and they call it an oops block, they're like, don't sew the chimney like that. And it's like, if you didn't read that, who'd look at this picture and be like, that's wrong. So it's another reason to read the whole thing and make sure you know what you're looking at. Um, and so your pattern will take you through all those things. And it'll also tell you about the binding and the backing. And it might give you suggestions for quilting your quilt as well. So all of that information is in the pattern. And if you have a good pattern that you can trust from a name that you can trust, uh, then you should be in really good hands. And you should always just go back to your pattern again and again and again and learn how to 
piece by piece, make one of these, for example, these little schoolhouse blocks. All of these pieces, there's never any guesswork. We had a guest on the show earlier today, and he was said, how do you know like, what size to cut all these pieces? And I said, it's all in the pattern. You don't ever have to guess at what, what sizes you need, what uh, colors you need, it's always in your pattern. And one other tip for you before we go today is if, you're, if you decide to do a different colorway, like if you wanna make this house block in green and blue and white, I don't think it's a bad idea to get your colored pencils out and just kind of sketch on an index card what it's going to look like in your colorway and stick that index card either on your pattern or near it so that when you're cutting and you're looking at the pattern you can say okay now they want six red pieces but in my case it's going to be six blue pieces or whatever just to kind of give you another guide an auxiliary uh, tool for your for your pattern so I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea about what your pattern will give you and how to read it and how to follow it. Visit us on Facebook, visit the website. We, I have a blog, you know, like I blog for Quilty and it's a lot of fun, I have to say. I think it's a pretty good blog. So check that out and uh, send us your comments and your questions. We really love doing this and we're glad you like it too. Thanks. Quilty is brought to you by APQS, handcrafted quilting machines. Aurifil, Aurifil Italian thread, perfectly suited for all your quilting projects. Baby Lock, for the love of sewing. Clothworks, inspiring creativity with art on fabric. Havels Sewing, when you need to cut it close, choose Havels. EMB, our fabrics, your lifestyle. Quiltology, the urban quilt space.